and welcome to a cup of tea with Stephen. Are you in the mood for dancing? Because I certainly am. Well, today's guest is someone who is one of the best British male dancers we have. He was partner to Anna Kennedy on The People Strictly, and we all just love him. He's in the West End, West End right now, in Here Comes the Boys. It's Robin Windsor. Hi, how are you? Hey, fabulous. How are you? You're looking fantastic. My God. Looking so well, I've um, uh, three weeks of rehearsals and getting back on stage again. Uh, it's completely stripped any piece of fat that was on me. God, it, just, you know, it just looks amazing. Listen, here comes the boy's been a huge hit for you, hasn't it? In the West End, uh, rave reviews. Uh, showbiz crowd came to see the first first night. Whose idea was it to uh, to put together? Here comes the boys. Uh, Here Come the Boys was first put together in 2018 and it was um, Ali Ash, Gorka and Giovanni and it was a sellout UK tour um, and they thought that uh, we would all be coming out of isolation after the pandemic around December time as we all thought it would. So we were supposed to start Here Come the Boys uh, at the Garrick Theatre in January and have a four month run uh, on the West End. But of course, everything got delayed again. Um, but the Palladium came up to us and said, um, we can offer you 14 shows um, here. Of course, they took it, um, and it's been the most exhilarating experience in my life, especially after I hung my dance shoes up a couple of years ago. Uh, mm. So it's like a bit of a re return for me, a bit of a comeback. And to be on the stage on the London Palladium, one of the most famous uh, theatres in the world, at the first show back after the year that everyone's just had, it's just an honour, really. It's amazing. It's been really exciting when Judy Garland appeared there and uh, other greats appeared. So it must just be really exciting to be, to be back on stage. Uh, how, how, how is it feeling for you to be back on stage after being locked down? Oh, it's just amazing. I mean, our industry has been hit so hard over the last year. Um, and to be able to so many people that are still out of work with nothing happening, no support from the government in our industry. Um, I feel very privileged to be able to be on that stage every night. And when we all walked on the stage on the first day, you could see everybody felt very emotional because it was a, a big thing for all of us. Um, and then to see the audience reaction was absolutely insane. Um, of course, it's socially distant, um, it's distanced all the seats. Um, so we haven't got that many in, but they sure made up for all the people that weren't there. My God, Robin, the reviews were incredible. Everyone was just, you know, so complimentary. About but how has, you know, being as an artist, being locked down yourself, uh, what was it like? Uh, I know you're doing some things at home uh, online, but what was it like the lockdown for you? Um, it was pretty tough. I mean, I've struggled very, very badly with my mental health over the years. Um, and lockdown was quite a scary thing for me because being shut in, I needed to be out. Um, but thankfully, I was uh, my flatmate as a personal trainer and a massage therapist. So I had win win <laughs> for me. Um, so he was able to train me, go to the park, train, and I'd get a massage like, once or twice a week uh, because he was, he was learning some new skills and he needed oh, yeah. a sort of guinea pig um so i was there so i got some great treatment um and it was okay and then i injured my shoulder a, a, another injury different than this one yeah. um and after that i found the fridge and uh, all i did was eat and eat and eat and i put on so much weight it look uh, like that. <laughs> and then uh, i was like oh my gosh what am i gonna do and as the year went on i moved house uh it's a different place for the second lockdown um and I put myself on a very strict diet, um, doing a lot of home workouts. Um, and then as soon as we were allowed out in February, it was, I made a very big decision to stop drinking. So I haven't had a drink in three months because I wanted to prepare for this show. Um, and I was up at, at the gym at six o'clock every morning for three months. That's amazing. I mean, don't you, people forget that dancers get injuries. I think because they watch them on television and all looks so nice. They don't think of them as like uh, the sports personalities that get injuries so easily. Uh, dancers do get do get do get injuries. But you've been dancing since you were three years old. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And so uh, uh, back in Ipswich, where I'm from, uh, my parents sort of would like casually teaching at the local dance school. Um, so I was always there. And uh, they caught me wiggling my hips in the mirror and I want a lesson and sort of the rest of history, really. And I went on to compete in my at Suffolk and then East Anglia and then across the country and then across the world. And I got myself to the highest position that I possibly could. Um, and then um, I got an offer to join a dance show called Burn the Floor and leave the competition world behind. Um, 
and I joined them and I was with them for 10 years traveling the world. So that's amazing. Oh, that's amazing. Well, have, have you ever wanted, so that's a silly question really, you know, is, have you ever wanted you to be anything else? No, never. I don't feel I've worked a day in my life really. Um, really? Apart from the casual jobs I was having to do when I was younger to be able to pay for my dancing and things like that. Um, when I'm dancing, that's not work. That's just pleasure. Even when you're really tired and you wake up and you think, oh my gosh, I can't do two shows today. As soon as you get to that uh, stage and that red curtain goes up, you don't work a day in your life. It's the most amazing, amazing feeling. I feel very lucky. That's brilliant. Robin, you, you're a country boy. Uh, you were brought up in the country outside of Ipswich, weren't you? Would you say you were a country boy at heart or, or a city boy? Oh, I'm definitely a city boy. Uh, the moment I arrived in London when I was 15, that was it. Um, although I didn't really grow that far um, at Hoopswich, <laughs> just on the outskirts. Um, so it was, That's even good. though it was a town, it was still quite busy. Uh, but I am definitely a city boy and will always be. You've uh, you've had loads of partners in, in Strictly and, and, and partners. You, you trade under Kennedy, um, my, my great friend for the people Strictly. Who's been your favourite partner? Oh, that's like asking if I've got kids, which one I like. <laughs> ah, yes. Uh, <laughs> but they were they were all great for completely different reasons. Um, but I probably had the best relationship with Lisa Riley. Yeah. Um, of course, uh, she, uh, she was the big girl that could dance. I mean, she's not big anymore, uh, but she was the big girl that could dance. She wanted to come out and prove a point that it didn't matter what size you were, that you could still dance. And um, she sure did. And we we were like brother and sister all the way through the series. We excuse me, we laughed, we joked, we cried. Uh, we sort of like did everything together. And of course she went all the way to the semi-final and became sort of like the people's champion. And um, it was amazing for me as well because it, it launched my profile so much further forward. Um, all of a sudden I wasn't that guy from Strictly. I was, that's Robin Windsor. And it was like, oh my gosh, that's absolutely amazing. <laughs> and we were on the front page of every newspaper every single week. So it, it was a great, great experience that year. The body image has played a lot part in uh, in mental health. You talked about your own mental health there. And a lot of people though, uh, you know, the, the, they see images of very thin people dancing and they think that's the only person they can do it. And it does affect people's mental health the way they, way they uh, was there ever a period in your life where you didn't feel good about your, your body? body image oh absolutely um being back if you go back 20 years uh being sort of like on the gay scene especially in london everybody all the guys were big and muscly and i was a really really skinny guy and i remember my first club and just feeling absolutely awful and that it's like you had to be like that to sort of fit in with the crowd. Yeah. So I disappeared off the scene for about six months and worked at the gym like crazy and came back. And all the guys that were uninterested in me before, all of a sudden were interested. And I'm just like thinking, nah. Yeah, yeah. Um, times, times are changing. And 20 years later, it's much more to, accepted to be who you want to be, shape, size, what you're into, all of that sort of stuff much more accepted, uh, but it was a tough time uh, 20 years ago. And I know when I first went to the limelight in New York when I was like 19 and underage practically, uh, I walked into the club and thought, oh my God, I'm the ugliest person on the planet. Uh, and one of the guys said to me, just a minute, said, look at that bar there. And there was a bar full of models standing there. And when we left, he said, they're still standing there and I'll go home. Uh, and it's not about image, it's who you are. And I learned it quite early on that, you know, it's nice to work yeah. out and everything, but it's, it's not the be end, end, end also. <laughs> I tell them, but body dysmorphia is something that I've dealt with most of my life, really. It's just, I will always, no matter what size I am, even if I it was big and chunky and things like that, I would still see a really skinny, skinny guy in the yeah. mirror. Hated it, and everyone else was like, "Oh, Robin, you look absolutely fantastic!" But in my head, I would see something completely different. And it's amazing when you speak to some of the celebrities on Strictly, who are the, the females. They are absolutely beautiful, but they have no confidence in themselves. Mm -hmm. They they think that they look fat, uh, and like you, you look, you have to convince them that they look beautiful. But that comes with, I think, the showbiz world as well plays a bit yeah. of a part. Uh, and look at yourself all the time. Uh, it's so true, but the pe people, so there's, you know, there's body image and body dysmorphia, which you're talking about, is quite common, especially in the showbiz world. And apart, among people that are very beautiful, they, they, they don't think they are. And, and, so, and I met one or two that think, really? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> this is yeah, so, it, it, <laughs> so it's, it's like that aesthetic image that everybody expects to see. Like for me, um, I, I put some weight on. I was quite actually, I was happy with that I put some weight on. It didn't really bother me. But then when I got the show to join Here Come the Boys, yeah. I was like, why well, I'm going to be in an open shirt or shirtless. I've got to be on stage. I know there's nothing wrong with getting on stage and having a little bit of a belly and things like that. But aesthetically in my head, I didn't want people to be judging me because yeah. I'm a bit wrong. So um, it, it's, it's, it's a hard one, really. And the press of a lot of, you know, the minute someone puts an ounce of weight on there in the Daily Mail online, go, has put on weight, you know, due to, uh, you know, and so, but listen, uh, back to Strictly, uh, you know, we, we had, uh, we, we, would you think there'd be a, a male couple ever dancing, uh, same sex couple on the show? Yeah, I think so. I think after last year with uh, Katia and Nicola Adams, yeah. Um, it was such a success, and I thought it was such a shame that she had to leave because of uh, <laughs> uh, COVID, which was really sad, because uh, I thought they would have gone far. Um, but what it's done is it's made the public more accustomed to seeing two of the same-sex dance together. There was uproar when they first announced there was going to be a same-sex couple, uh, and then as soon as they saw it, they were like, oh, that's actually pretty good. And there were, all the complaints dropped right down once they'd seen it. So I think it's something that needs to be seen uh, for people to be more accepting. It's like anything, really, uh, yeah. until you see it and it's on the TV. Um, but I'm not sure if this year they might do a same-sex male couple or, I don't know, maybe a drag queen this year. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, Courtney I think... Oh, Courtney Act would be great. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Fantastic, fantastic. And, you know, there's amazing in this day and age, the, the uproar about same-sex couple, but someone's shooting someone or cutting someone's head off in a, a film. Perfectly all right. So it's, it's, a, it's a slightly sad world. But you, Robin, we were talking earlier about you were saying uh, to uh, you know, going to motivational speaking and helping people. And I was asking you about uh, young LGBT people and giving advice. And you said, choose your friends wisely. Um, but how do you go about that? Yeah, it's, um, people are quite aware of the pe friends that they pick. Uh, make sure you pick the right group of friends. They're going to be with you through thick and thin. And um, oh, one of the things that I noticed with my own mental health is I bottled everything up for so long, it got so bad. And the best thing I ever did was tell somebody about it. And I left it too late. I went through absolute hell. Um, my experience and I'd left it too late and eventually I had to ask for help because I was in that much trouble. Um, so if, if anybody's ever feeling down or anything like that, I mean, we've just had uh, obviously the worst year of our lives um, and mental health issues have risen through the roof. Um, and the best thing you can do is tell someone and it is scary. It's probably the scariest thing you'll ever do. It's harder for me to talk about my mental health than it was for me to come. Um, it's sort of seen as a, non-masculine thing for guys to be able to talk about themselves and their problems uh females normally do they're very talkative about what goes on in their lives men aren't quite the same uh but it's a sign of strength to be able to talk so um as bt used to say it's good to talk and they were exactly right uh, you, you've got you you partnered with my great friend and your great friend anna kennedy and the people strictly and you've got involved with thank you very much with a charity i'm patron of anna kennedy online which deals with kids with autism i mean it was just incredible what you did and and you got involved with the uh with uh autism has got talent which we do each year i was just perspective on did you did you know about autism before you got involved with with, with anna no, not a thing um at, at dancing with anna I'll completely opened my eyes uh, to the fact that there is such a huge spectrum of autism like um it is it's ridiculous uh, uh, how vast it is yeah. and i think we sort of have something in our head um uh, but it isn't until you experience something like that and especially with autism's got talent i will never ever forget there was a young man who played the drums <gasps> yes he had to be carried onto stage because he was all locked up like this they put the drumsticks in his hand and moved them to the to the drums and everything relaxed and he played the drums like absolutely incredible and i sat there with tears streaming down my eyes because the power of music and the power of dance and things like that are absolutely incredible and what anna does is just phenomenal she works tirelessly uh, to raise awareness and obviously her main thing is to look after her two boys yeah. um, 
done an amazing job. I mean, she sleeps for two or three hours a night. I, I don't know. I didn't know how she gets it. I mean, I know she does Zumba classes, but uh, it is just incredible, isn't it? I mean, uh, she's a, she's a, well, the show's back on in October, thank goodness, at the Mermaid Theatre, so we'll, we'll, hope, we'll hope to see you either so what when you're not dancing and getting massages what do, what do you like to do um i love going to the gym obviously that's my release it's a great thing for me to do every morning i've set myself a regime sadly i've got a uh bulged disc in my neck with uh horrible nerve pain so i'm not able to work out at the moment but i can do legs and bum so they're going to be absolutely amazing <laughs> at the end of and um I've gone into corporate team building, um, using dancing as a tool for people to work together. Um, and that's, that's, called, that's called positively moving. And uh, that was just about to start before the pandemic hit, so I can get cracking with that. And uh, my other sort of venture is the ultimate dance experience, where we are giving people, the, the, without saying it, not allowed, the strictly experience. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they get an intense two-week course uh, with me. Um, they'll have somebody come and film it. it, it ideally, for somebody's 60th birthday, for a big birthday. That's great present. They get the dress. They get all of that, um, all that sort of thing, a trip to DSI. And I come down the stairs with them, and the VT plays, and we dance at their party. So that's, that's my new Great idea. For boys and girls wanting to start into dance, what's your recommendation for them? And adults. Oh, get yourself, don't, um, don't just stick yourself to a pigeonhole of one style of dance. Go and try loads of things. If you're a kid, um, growing up now in theatre, in shows, all sorts of uh, styles of dance are required now. Uh, not just the ballet, jazz and tap. Everything from ballroom, hip-hop, this, that, the other. Go try everything and get yourself down. There are thousands of local dance schools around the country and the best thing to do is get there. Try out loads of different classes, find out which one you're best suited to to start off, and then keep at it as you go. And what, who's your influence dance wise when you're growing up? Um, there's a guy called Jason Gilkerson. Um, he was a uh, world professional champion, so I used to idolise him as I was growing up, and his partner, Peter Roby. They were at, from Australia, they are absolutely amazing. Um, and then when I was asked to join Burn the Floor, he was the director, choreographer, and he was in the show. So I was getting to work and train with the person I idolised <laughs> growing up. Uh, and now he's creative director on Strictly Come Dancing. So we got to work together there as well. Um, and it's been absolutely amazing. That's fantastic. Well, you, you obviously enjoy living in London, but what would you, if, you, if I made you mayor for the day, what would you change? The one thing that I would change in London is rent prices and house prices because mm. nobody can get save up the money to be able to put a deposit down. On a house. No, what's the most proudest thing you've done in life? That you're most proud of? Oh my gosh, there are so many. Um, our opening night on Broadway with Burn the Floor was absolutely incredible because it was Broadway, which is the ultimate for any dancer, but especially for us because we were the first ever ballroom show to be on Broadway. Um, and we had people like J-Lo, Meat Loaf, Matt Damon, Catherine Zeta-Jones, like, coming to see us. It was unreal. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, I mean, it's little steps, but then we opened Burn the Floor on the West End after I'd been on Strictly, or while I was on Strictly, and they, after being with so long, they asked me to headline the show with Christina Rianoff. Yeah. Um, the day that the signs went up, to see my name above a theatre in London, that is probably the proudest moment that I could possibly yeah. have ever envisaged to, to happen. And then going on the underground and seeing my picture yeah. down. <laughs> that must be, that must be oh, surreal. Um, it was amazing. And my friends were like, Robin, we love you. But every time we turn a corner, your eyes are just there. <laughs> um, and that was oh, just wonderful. Um, and then... I don't know how it's happened, but that's happened again with uh, being at the London Palladium. So I've got, I've had my name above the the Shaftesbury Theatre and now at the London Palladium, and I, I, I just have to pinch myself sometimes. It's, it's, it's amazing, you deserve it. So um, you've got here come the boys. What else have you got going on for the rest of the year, or do you plan? Well, um, um, when I retired from performing, um, I went to live in Lucia, it's called the Body Holiday, where I go every year. 
um, because every month is themed and June is Jive June. So I used to go out there and teach a few classes a week and have a holiday. Um, I'm actually going there on Friday this week. Yeah. Uh, I'm there for three weeks and I cannot wait because I need that after all of this. Yeah. Um, then I'm going to get back into my corporate team building now. People are starting to go back to the office and things like that. And then coming up at the end of the year, I've got Panto. I've got a new tour um, in February, uh, sorry, January to May. We can't talk about it just yet. Uh, and then here come the boys tour. Um, so yes, yeah, I'm back. I'm back dancing. I am back for good. You can't get can't... So where, where are you? You're playing the genie, I say, because I see you over the internet. Everybody assumed that, but uh, that was for a commercial for some online gambling. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm. Uh, I can't say what I'm doing yet because they haven't announced it. Oh, so okay, no problem. Like, it was really funny. I did think to myself because it took four hours to paint you. How are they going to replicate that in the theatre every night? <laughs> oh, it's not blue. It's still coming out my ears. <laughs> uh, uh, out of four hours in makeup, I was dying. Uh, but I'm doing. I've done the genie actually four times in, uh, for Aladdin for Panto. But this year I'm doing something completely different. Oh, exciting. Oh, well, well, we'll look out for that, Robin. I can't thank you enough. Uh, I'll, I'll put on how to get hold of you underneath the, the video, uh, uh, but it's been great and, and an inspiration. Thanks ever so much, Robin. You're welcome. Thank you.